everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. What you saw there in the intro was uh, the RX-7 having, unfortunately, uh, an engine failure uh, due to a fuel pressure problem. So uh, fuel cell is out of the car and what we're gonna do is basically have a bit of a look at um, what we can do to make sure that fuel surging or fuel starvation isn't a problem in this car anymore or in yours. So what we're gonna be doing is adding some baffles, showing you what they look like and how they go about it improving the breathing system on the, uh, on, the, on the fuel cell and also improving the pickup location regards to where the pump sits in the car. So, all right, without uh, further ado, let's cut this fuel cell open and take a look at what it looks like right now and some of the improvements we're gonna make. Right, so this is the uh, old fuel cell in all its glory. You can see I'm just modifying this one uh, instead of making a new one from scratch. It's just the quickest and easiest way to get it. This one already mounts to all the holes in the car, so don't have to worry about all that stuff. Know it fits in the area. I'm just gonna modify this with some um, with some baffles, basically. So as you can see, this was the original sort of lid, how it sat. Uh, had an extra bit of volume over here. Got another one on there and that. So all up now, I'm thinking this is going to be around 14 and a half liters, which should be fine because we only use seven uh, every run. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is uh, as follows. So that's where the old pickup was. So this is where the fuel pump is. This is where the front of the car is. So that's where the old pickup was. Now, my train of thought is maybe that I had this much fuel in it and with no baffles that maybe the pickup got starved of fuel for just a, a brief second or the breather which was here as you can see like this used to, this uh sat originally uh like like so and that's the breather uh the big blue one there is is the breather uh that maybe because there's obviously no baffles all the fuel sloshed and covered the breather and just had trouble breathing or something so what i'm actually going to do is um there's sort of three things or, or more we'll have to count them off as we go here so um i'm making a little um sum section here and the reason for this is the reason i um had the pickup there was because the pump is, is mounted essentially almost here uh, from where the fuel cell sits in the car so the inlet of the pump is like down here somewhere um, or, or about here uh, and that meant you know when i had a big square tank originally i couldn't put the uh, outlet anywhere but there pretty much. So uh, what I've done is I've actually also, there was two mounting holes for the pump. So I've lowered the pump. So now the pump sits a bit lower than even the tank. So it's always gonna be 100% gravity fed before the top of the pump was actually, the bottom of the pump where the pump feed was about here. So it had to slightly suck up. So pretty much this section of the fuel cell or about that section of the fuel cell was always lower than the pump. So always sort of wanna have the fuel cell draining into you know into your uh, your fuel pump uh even that's the same case with an electric pump as well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sump off uh, or cut off this section here and i'll seal that off and i'll have the outlet now um for the uh fuel pump will sit right um right here basically so with it sitting right there uh, that means it's in the way of the G-forces uh, for when the car launches. So fuel's going to be sloshed back this way and the outlet's going to be right there in the path of that. Uh, and then the pump, it'll go straight into the pump and then and then a 90 directly into the pump. So it's just a, a straight piece of hose and a 90 directly into the pump, which is hopefully ideal. Uh, next thing that we're doing will be uh, baffles. So what I've got is... Uh, a few a few baffles here so i'm going to be uh, putting a couple of baffles in give you an idea of what they are and where they sit uh, that one will sit i think even a bit lower than that one but we've got one baffle there another one of the baffles will sit here uh, like that and again a couple of decent cutaways there uh, so fuel sloshing in here will be contained uh, and then i'll have yet another baffle uh, which will go maybe about there or something uh, something like that so uh, what that means is you know fuel sloshing in underneath in that little area there will get caught against uh, the, that baffle and be contained down there which the volume down here in what will now be this section 
is about three liters. So it's a fair, fair amount of volume, considering we use about seven liters for overall to drive there, do a burnout and everything. So that should be fine. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the section in here is about another, um, oh, I think it's about another like six or so liters that's contained almost in this area. So the sloshing, it'll, you know, G-forces cramming it back, it'll hit a wall and it'll it'll stay in this area. You've got drain, drainage here, you've got drainage here into that lower area. Uh, any fuel that gets trapped in this little pocket's got drainage here into the lower pocket as well. And any fuel in this pocket here gets drainage back into this pocket as well. So hopefully uh, that helps solve some of our um, fuel issues. Got my uh, welding helmet hair on, but uh, just uh, welded some baffles in there and I think that should be more than fine. I've got the lid here now so if we place this down there like so uh, I've got the big fitting for the breather, that's the return this is the cap uh, and I think that should be pretty much it. We'll do the um, I'll do the notch out after after this because uh, that's easy enough to do but uh, I really can't see fuel slosh being an issue with this anymore and, and hopefully with um, with the breather and all the baffles in it, it also won't be an issue either. So, all right, let's uh, weld this up and see what it looks like after this. Time to travel through uh, time and space now because uh, progressed a fair bit and I didn't film the rest of it. So let's take a look at what we're at now, what we're working with. And this is pretty much the final product. Now, I was going to keep the breather lines down the back, but what I decided to do was ensure that it's got the shortest route possible, uh, that if fuel does get in here, it drains away and drains away quickly. So what I did was I had a single catch can and then all I did was I got another chunk of, um, I think two and a half inch aluminium and cut it in, cut them down the sides and joined them together. So combined volume there, I don't know, like two odd liters or whatever. So I don't think it's gonna puke two liters of methanol out of, ever out of breather, but, um, yeah, it's got a little uh, on the side here. It's It'll have a, an indicator like my other catch can does. I wanted to actually put it here and I did sort of originally. And then I realized once I got the intercooler pipe, it fouled on the blower valve. So I just put it here instead. Uh, you can see there's single breather, but that's not the way it'll stay. I'm actually going to um, put another breather in the top of the cap that'll come down and go to that port. So what that'll mean is we'll cover off all the bases, hopefully, for everything that we've needed to do. So we'll have two breathers, one at the front of the tank, one basically at the rear of the tank. To modify the bottom of the tank, so then the outlet's exactly where I want it to be. Got two breathers, we've got baffles. Uh, fingers crossed, that's all it is. Um, realistically, if I still have a fuel pressure problem here, it's definitely the pump uh, without a doubt. I think this pump is actually, if I go to the company's website now, they're not even around anymore. So definitely couldn't get any parts for it. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like a knockoff Waterman pump. Someone said once uh, or what, what these sort of pumps were and that. I didn't buy it brand new. I, I bought it many, many, many years ago um, when I was in the middle of actually building the 626. I sort of future proofed what I need parts wise and I, I bought it and it was incredibly cheap i got it with um i think i got it with a, a pair of msd um dis ignition boxes and i got this and it was like well under a thousand bucks um that's pretty much where it's going to sit now i'm going to pull it out now sand it back a bit and then uh give it a lick of paint and yeah hopefully that means we can go racing and actually run some time so let's uh let's pull it out paint it and take a look at what uh what color we should do it hmm. Right, so here we go, fresh off the gun, we have, well, it was meant to be satin, uh, but it was undercoat, then satin black rattle can paint. Uh, and all I had was two pack gloss clear. So um, it's not so much satin anymore, that it is pretty glossy in that, but I like painting stuff like this these days. It's made a massive improvement on the lifespan of, of stuff I paint. I used to paint stuff with rattle cans and that before, and they you know, chemicals or whatever and that, they just wash them off in no time. But uh, this setup with the 2K clear over the top of basically any 1K uh, color really, really works pretty well. So this is uh, pretty much what we're looking at. And um, 
Yeah, we'll get this back in the car soon. I fill it with fuel and start it next week, hopefully sometime. And maybe if uh, all goes well, we might even race on the, I think it's the 16th of October. So it's Sunday week sort of thing. So see how we go. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, wait for a couple more parts to finish this off and we'll get to it. But yeah, that's how we have baffled the fuel cell and hopefully that stops any fuel surge issues. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.